All right, well, welcome everybody to our presentation today um, on Africa. And we've got Robin here from Gilt Edge, who is gonna be taking us through some wonderful, um, gorgeous pictures. I saw a lot of these earlier today. Um, and she's gonna be telling us all about safaris and travel to Africa. If you have any questions, feel free to um, put your questions in the chat or in the q and I'll be monitoring, I'm Nora with Travel Leaders. Um, and there'll be time for questions at the end as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Robin. Thank you again for being here and uh, everyone enjoy. Thank you, Nora, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to preface this that um, Gilt Edge Africa, which is headquartered in the beautiful city of Cape Town, and you can see Table Mountain in my background, has been a, um, an in-country partner with travel leaders for a long time. So we are a very trusted partner. And I will just say that you are going to be in very good hands as you consider your, um, your next trip to Africa. So with that intro being said, um, I just wanted to welcome everyone to this webinar on travel to South Africa. And during the last several months, let me just say that there's been a lot going on behind the scenes at the hotels and the resorts and the safari lodges and all the relevant transfer companies prepare their strict COVID-19 protocol to welcome all the um, uh, travelers back with safety on top of mind. So um, as you're probably all very aware that the virus and its mutations have restricted travel at the moment. And South Africa is now waiting, hopefully, for the vaccine to boost travel confidence. And um, I just wanted to mention that uh, the restrictions are from South Africans going to the United States. There are no restrictions of US travelers going to South Africa. There are protocols which I'm going to cover, but I just wanted to mention that. So you know, in the interim, when guests are traveling to Africa right now, um, they'll be able to enjoy their stay with minimum crowds, uh, unencumbered game viewing, and a very low footprint wherever they travel in Africa, which is great. So uh, I also just kind of wanted to mention that, you know, um, the world took a big pause on travel as we uh, uh, all noticed in 2020, but in 2021, our destinations are looking more beautiful than ever, but there's been an unusual trend First, many bookings that were planned for 2020 have been rebooked for 2021. So a lot of the hotels and a lot of the companies, you know, have um, half their capacity in terms of what's available. And um, the discounted prices may also increase because of this, um, of this uh, demand for travel. So, as the vaccinations roll out, there will be an increasing number of people who feel safe to travel um, and they will book new trips. And so it's good. If you are thinking of traveling to going uh, to Africa in the, in, the, from the, in the next six to 18 months, it's good to plan now. So there'll be no, um, what is the word? There'll be no disappointment you know, in availability. It's actually for 2021 and 2022, things of course will be, uh, there'll be the sort of pent up demand. So um, I also wanted to say that before I start the webinar, that we know there's much uncertainty ahead. So for a limited time, we are providing all our travel leader clients um, very flexible booking terms, which I'm going to go over shortly. So with that being said, um, I'm just actually going to take myself out of the picture if I can find a way to do that. Uh, let's see, there you go. And let me make this into a large slide. Here we are with that. All right, so I wanted to just basically say to you that um, tourism is alive and it is waiting for us to return to um, the adventures that we love. And um, the protocols, however, do vary and are in flux as countries keep a keen eye on the virus spread. And I'll, I'll um, uh, let you know that Guild Edge has a fantastic link that is updated every single day to help our uh, travel leaders, advisors, uh, be a, keep abreast of what is um, being restricted and what is being unrestricted and as it comes and goes. 
But in the meantime, we offer very unique experiences to South Africa. So I wanted to mention there's all sorts of things like swimming with the sharks, if you are that adrenaline kind of person. There are helicopter rides to private islands. Um, you can meet with Christo Brunt, and he was one of Nelson Mandela's prison wardens on, uh, on um, Robben Island, and you can meet with him and he can tell you the story of, 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 of Mandela. You can go on walking safaris, and there's all sorts of things you can do, like having a happy hour, and you can see that in the bottom left-hand corner with the Maasai warriors. So um, unique bucket list wow experiences is what we're all about. And what we want you to do as our, as our client is to be able to go back to your family and have bragging rights. Another aspect of travel, which is very popular at the moment, is what I like to call travel with a purpose, and that's the philanthropy side. So you can go and have a wonderful trip in South Africa, but you can also do good. So you can give back by um, participating with um, vulnerable children, um, or you can participate by um, doing ecotourism, working with animals, or edutourism, which is kind of you can roll up your sleeves and you can actually engage with some of these kids and with these animals. So bear that in mind, travel with a purpose. These are some of the companies that we work with. And some of you may be aware of Pack for a Purpose, which actually allows you to, to pack stationary art supplies, sporting goods, and take them along with you. The kids love that and they appreciate it immensely. They also love to see international travelers. They don't see many. And so sharing your life and your lifestyle with them is greatly appreciated. Adventure, of course, bungee jumping, uh, zip lining, uh, you know, going with Harley Davidson, Davidson bikes around Table Mountain, kayaking with penguins, swimming with the dolphins are all exciting, adventurous trips that we love to include. Listen, if you're going on a safari, that's exotic and adventurous enough. And add these um, additional elements really will give you those bragging rights that I mentioned. Now, if you're looking for anything romantic, honeymoon, you're looking at reunions, you're looking at anniversaries, Africa is the place. I'm gonna open up the screen a little bit over there. You can see those fantastic star beds, which um, you're right under the stars at night, you're way up above the ground, you've got those mosquito nettings, and you've got those very romantic little lights. And uh, that is truly a bucket list experience. Um, by the way, it doesn't have to be a, um, an anniversary. Anybody can do that, but it's certainly wonderful for romance. And then, of course, you can also see the dinner uh, for two on the beach. Lovely, lovely romantic destination. Multi-generational travel. If any of you are thinking of traveling with your grandkids or with your, with your grandparents, um, the accommodations both on safari and in the hotels in Cape Town accommodate multi-generational parties. Even for little kids, they've actually got playgrounds and um, creches, which are kind of like, um, I guess, nursery schools where there's a, a nanny or a caregiver. So the adults can go out on safari. And then there's also the junior ranger program, like you can see at the bottom where the kids learn about the animals. Obviously, they're not with the predators, but the tortoises and the smaller animals, the deer, and you learn about their footprints and the stars, etc. So um, lovely, lovely for um, multi-generational families. Then private guided safaris, that is really the way to go, especially now in the sort of COVID environment where you're in your own little bubble and it's all very private. Just some lovely pictures to whet your appetite. Gourmet safaris. Well, that's what a, a safari is all about. Nora asked me earlier, what are, what are my favorite things on safari? Well, one of them is the food, because that's what you do. You, you gain view and you eat, and the food is superb. And I also would mention at this time that Cape Town is the gourmet capital of South Africa. So, of course, they've got the vineyards, and people uh, uh, enjoy um, good food. Um, as well as wine, South Africa is the place to go. I was just going to also mention that a big division of ours is to visit the beautiful, stunning Indian Ocean Islands. These are off the east coast of Africa, Seychelles, Mauritius, Mozambique, Maldives, Zanzibar, just to name a few. And the idea is to do what we call bush and beach. The bush part is going on safari, and you combine it with the beach with one of these gorgeous islands and you've got the absolute perfect um, itinerary. 
So just moving into the sort of current world, um, where in Africa can I travel? And this, this map was actually updated in, in December. Um, but what's interesting is that it's changing all the time. As I said to you earlier on, it's in flux and we're keeping an eye out on all the countries, but this basically shows you the areas in Africa that we cover. We cover Southern Africa, Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, also uh, the gorilla trekking in Uganda and Rwanda in East Africa, also Tanzania and Kenya. So um, these are places to think about and each safari destination is completely different to the other from being, you know, the flat plains, you know, in East Africa uh, to the lush Botswana environment where you've actually got, you know, the flooded waters and you can go on a water safari. So I uh, wanted to show you that everything is pretty much open now, but there are the restrictions that I mentioned. Also, just to let you know that the great thing about having a trusted partner like Guilt Edge and Travel Leaders is that we are the destination experts, we are on the ground, and so it's good to have somebody to hold your hand and walk you through the sort of puzzle and some of the complexities of the protocols that are um, in place right now. So it's good to know you're in good hands. So back to here, why Africa now? And I, I, I love this picture because it's, it's, it's very appealing. It shows a safari vehicle crossing a bridge into the Africa bush, which is very symbolic of natural social distancing and a place to unwind from all the madding crowds. So I love to show this picture as an intro. Now moving into South Africa, it is perfect for travel and it will satisfy all your pent up travel demands. The wide open spaces, the social distancing that I mentioned, the sole use accommodations in villas for families and groups that are traveling in their multi-generational bubbles, perfect for that. And of course, we've got private safari vehicles are also available for maximum safety and social distancing. By the way, in the bottom left-hand corner is another example of a, of a more sort of modern star bed. Great picture here, you've got your tracker, you've got your uh, driver, and you've got your uh, lions, and off you're away in the beautiful, natural, pristine bush. Here's a great picture of the, uh, the vehicles, the safari vehicles that are open and they're tiered, and uh, so you've always got an aisle seat and a good, and good viewing. And then a couple of pictures at the bottom of a place called Grootbos on the left-hand side, as well as a place called Lekavata Beach, an Afrikaans word for sweet water oceans. Um, these are places that are about one or two hours outside of Cape Town. We call them the Cape Breakaways. And they're also, you know, um, a wonderful destination as part of a South African itinerary. There's one of the big five. The big five, if none of you are aware, or some of you are, you always want to be able to at least check off when you're on safari that you've seen a lion, um, that you've seen there again, you can see that picture, a leopard, a buffalo, um, an elephant, of course. And what is the fourth one? I think I've forgotten what the, fourth, what the fifth one is. Uh, it's just escaping me. It's not a hippo, even though a hippo is very large. But there are the big five that will come back to me. Oh, that's it, the rhino. I think I'd forgotten about the rhino. But you always want to be able to check off that you've seen the big five. And it's, 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 it's the reason why they are the big five is because they, way back in the day, when people used to go on hunting safaris, those are the trophies that people wanted. We no longer do any of that through Guilt Edge, but that has remained the big five. This is a picture of Bushman's Kloof, and I wanted to put it up there just to show you the kind of social distancing. That would be a sole use accommodation, and you would certainly be away from, um, from the crowds. Here is another uh, couple of pictures of the star beds in, in South Africa. One is um, a, a large port in Ghana. The other one is, um, is a place called Swalu, absolutely beautiful camps in the African bush. And here are a couple of penguins because the penguins in South Africa are one of the only warm weather uh, penguins in the world. And these guys are saying, come on down to Cape Town because there's great open white spaces and we miss you. So this picture shows the penguins in a place called Boulders Beach. 
also the gorgeous scenery of the winelands, wherever you go, they are surrounded, these winelands by the mountains. And then of course, the great oceans and beaches and the sweeping vistas that you can see at the bottom. What's become an incredible trend right now, not just in Africa, although Africa is a great place for it, is wellness safaris. And here you can see people doing yoga. It's very um, uh, uh, spread out. You've got solitude, you've got alone time, you can enjoy your me time. And of course, most of the lodges and many of the hotels and resorts have spas. And we highly recommend that on your itinerary now because it's just been so stressful over the last year that it's just really a, a great um, activity to add to your itinerary. And in the bottom left-hand corner, of course, there are the bushwalks. So you can go out to the ranger and um, you can go walking and these can be uh, arranged at your lodge. I'm also just throwing in golf courses because uh, golfing, especially in, uh, in Cape Town, um, are very popular, quite stunning, and a great um, example of the social distancing we keep talking about. All right, so conservation and community upliftment. I thought it'd be very important for me just to mention this to you because there is an urgency right now in South Africa for travelers to come back. And that is because the, um, the animals and the conservation efforts rely very strongly on the American or the tourist dollar. And without that, the poaching is kind of way off the charts. So we, we need 24 seven vigilance and surveillance and the only way to do this, you know, is, you know, is through, is through paying, you know, these, um, uh, you know, these watches. So uh, the way it works is that the staff in the communities around the lodges um, are employed. And so they can have or earn a living and they don't have to go out poaching, you know, to try and, and gain money that way. So we're looking very, very forward to having our guests come back to South Africa. And uh, Gilt Edge Africa is very supportive of various nonprofits or NGOs, as we call them, including uh, the Co Community Conservation Fund of Africa. And these empower local communities to empower themselves. So conservation, as I said, is a big trend and a big focus, and it's certainly worth um, taking into mind. So South African protocols. Well, first of all, just want to let you know that Gilt Edge Africa has won the, um, or has been awarded the Safe Travel Stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council. We worked very, very hard at that. Um, in South Africa, on arrival, all travelers are to take or to present a COVID-19 test, taken no less than 72 hours before arrival. And without that, you will be, you know, expected to go into a mandatory quarantine. So I think this, everybody's familiar with this in travel right now. All travelers, they will be screened on arrival. And if there are any symptoms, they'll be required to stay in quarantine until they test negative. And I will just mention here that all lodges and hotels around South Africa have either a room, a suite, or even a floor that is dedicated to a quarantine scenario should it arrive. So they're very jacked up with, you know, thinking through all the protocols. Uh, I also wanted to mention that um, travelers are, are, are encouraged to install the South African government a contact alert app. Ramaphosa is the president there. And it's a great app because it um, alerts you if you have been in contact with anybody who may, you know, have uh, had the virus or been in contact with someone with the virus. So it gives you that extra ability to, to, to know that if it does happen, you know, you can go and get a test. So it's just going above and beyond to really kind of be mindful of all these precautions. Here are a couple of great travel tips, and I am going to go through them because it just shows you the thinking behind the South African um, uh, travel industry. Number one, fly direct if possible. So you're not going to have luggage or all sorts of odd things happening because right now there's a lot of delays and reroutings. So fly direct. Testing is available 
um, at all the main game lodges in South Africa and in East Africa. So when you need to get a test, you know, to sort of go to the next location or to return, they're all available. It's also good to have several nights in between flights, just in case there are delays, like I mentioned. So you're not going to lose out if you've got a couple of days, you know, in between your flights, you're quite safe. Spa treatments, very highly recommended. And as I said, that all the hotels and lodges enforce the protocols. And you'll note that a lot of the amenities now are branded masks and hand sanitizer. That's just the norm. I mentioned the uh, COVID alert app, well worth uh, downloading. We also recommend that you ask for a sort of VIP meet and greet at the airport to take you through. So you don't have to be in lines or you know, worry about going, you know, going through um, the airport. Um, I mentioned the hotels and the, and the lodges having a floor or a possible quarantine space. This is interesting. Most of the transactions, like your menus and your activities, are all available through QR codes. And what a QR code is, it's, it's on your phone and it's all touchless transactions. And it's very widely used in South Africa. So they've got these little bars. You've probably seen them, those little kind of bars on your phone. And you know, put that in front of, of the menu or the activities and everything shows up. And even, even uh, the check-in is paperless. So this is, this is good to know. And then um, we also recommend a slower pace safari. So you're not going to be running from one lodge to the next. One night here, one night there. If you can spend two or three nights at a lodge, and enjoy the lodge, enjoy the game viewing, and then you can sort of relax and you're not, um, we call it the slow safari. That's what we recommend. We also recommend uh, right now to just go to one country. If you're gonna go to Kenya or Tanzania or South Africa, rather than going to multi countries, it just makes it much more simpler and less things that go bump in the night. We encourage chartered flights, you know, if, you, if we can, or, can, if, or from, from one lodge to another. And it's also, be, also good to be aware of all the protocols of the country that you're going to or traveling through or flying back to. And your trusted GE consultant that will work with your um, uh, travel leader's advisor is well versed in all of this. They'll hold your hand so you don't really have to memorize this. I just wanted to show you the tips and to let you know, you know, the links to which South African or South African travel industry has gone to make you feel comfortable. Little quick summary, there are convenient testing sites at all the airports, the main airports, um, at the different lodges. And also there are, there are a lot of connecting flights from Johannesburg in Cape Town. So you don't have to go into the cities. You can bypass the cities, you know, where there's a lot more people and go directly to the, um, to the bush and the beach. Right, so terms and conditions, you know, we recognize that there's a lot of uncertainty around making plans at the moment. And we understand these real concerns. And we want to take the risks away from our guests who are committing to travel. And so we've got these new revised booking terms. Number one, you have the option of 100% refund and no cancellation fees as long as there's some kind of an issue going on around COVID. We can postpone. So if you, if you, if you um, are concerned about traveling on the date you originally booked, you can put it onto a new date. And we can also hold your reservations for 14 days if you need the time to think about it with no payment required. So that's another comfort level. You know, go ahead, you can book and not worry about being stuck, you know, with, um, uh, you know, with unclaimed uh, funds. All right, let me just say that um, there are, as you can imagine, many generous price discounts at the moment to encourage travelers, as well as incentives that promote longer stays at various establishments. So for example, stay uh, four nights and only pay for three. And this is in line with, again, with what I said earlier on, the slow safari. So instead of rushing around, you'll stay a little longer at, at, your, at, your, um, at your property. All right, and then I wanted to mention a couple of awards that GE has. So this is again to know that you are in very good hands. We've got the uh, um, we've, we've we've passed the supply verification by the US-based trusted FIT services. What that means is that it allows us, Guild Edge, to offer our clients and our agents 
an extra level of trust and assurance of our financial security and our reliability. Very good to have that comfort level. And then we've also got the FIFO Platinum Trusted Service Award this year, and it represents an unbroken record of fantastic service by our Guilt Edge team. Again, to know that you're in good hands. And last but not least, we've done it again. We are the proud um, winners of in, in 2020. For the 11th time, we've been voted South Africa's leading luxury tour operator. Fantastic, we're very proud of that. And also South Africa's leading destination management company. So a huge thank you to our staff, our agents, our clients, our partners, to you, everybody for, for your support. And last but not least, if anybody wants to get one of our stunning brochures, you've got them actually online. You've also got hard copies and you can just reach out to Nora or any of your travel leaders, agents, and we can get one mailed out to you. They're absolutely beautiful. They're coffee table booklets and they will definitely whet your appetite and give you a nice uh, introduction into the countries in Africa. So there you have it. See you in Africa. Thank you so much. And I'm going to take off the screen sharing, if I can do that. And let me see, uh, get back on. And now I'm going to be ready. Is that the screen sharing uh, I'm trying to? Here, I can help you out. Yeah, no longer need that screen. Uh, let me just stop it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wonderful job, Robin. And like I said before, those photos are amazing. Just amazing. I mean, it just, it makes you want to go. It yes. makes you want to go. So a couple of questions. You mentioned, you know, if they want to travel in, in 2021, it's really a good idea to book now, maybe even for 2022. How far out can we book? Can we book into 22 or 23 already? Absolutely. That's what I was recommending because people are doing that already. And so avail availability, it sounds really strange. It's kind of a good problem to have, but availability is becoming a little less. So you can book, you know, between now and, and, and even up to 18 months. That's a very, very good idea. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Uh, Sandy mentioned that she had friends who traveled with Guild Edge to Tanzania and they had a wonderful experience. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to put them in the chat um, or the Q&A. I will watch for those. Um, you, you mentioned um, you know, some, some parts of the safari that you really enjoy um, and, and you mentioned the food. What are some of the typical things you would eat on a safari? Well, there's nothing really typical because it's all pretty much gourmet, but they will have a South African flavor. So we have something that we call a braai, B-R-A-A-I. And that is our term for a barbecue, but it's a South African barbecue, okay? And it's, uh, it's, it's um, uh, you know, delicious evening where you will have your barbecue and you will have your meal and you'll have it outside in a boma. And a boma, all these terms I'm giving you, is kind of like um, it's a big fire, and the and the tables are around are around the fire, so it's kind of a circle. It's very atmospheric, and it's kind of what the old tribes used to do back. Well, they still do it, you know. Is they come around the boma, they come around the fire, and they talk and they share, and that's the atmosphere that we're giving. But the food, there's also something that is called pap. And it's kind of like a maize. It's a very South African food and you can use it with your fingers where you actually take, it looks like a, a mashed potato, but it's maize. And you take it with your fingers and you put it in the sauce and you eat it with your hands. So there's all sorts of very delicious and unusual eating experiences. Well, that is interesting. There are a couple of questions coming in. One is about the cage diving with the great whites in Cape Town. Um, is there an option to do that? Oh, absolutely. I thought I had mentioned it and I apologize. That is really popular for people. I, I certainly wouldn't put myself into that category. But if you are, it's not for the faint of heart, but if you love that adrenaline thing, it is very, very popular in South Africa is the shark cage diving. Absolutely. And you can do it any time of the year. You know, even when it's a little cooler, you can go with a, um, a wetsuit. 
but um, yeah, that is a that is a big attraction. Okay. The other question is, what would be the average cost per person for a ten day safari? You know, it's a it's a tricky question. I'm going to try and actually give you a dollar amount, but again, it depends on you know what kind, what your budget is. In other words, do you want to go four star or five star? How long you want to go? What time of the year you want to go? You know, etc. Um, but you can you can certainly the great news about South Africa is that our currency, which is called the rand, okay. Is such that as with, as an American, you can literally buy South Africa. I mean, it's 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 you get so much value, you know, for your dollar. So it's really worth going five star if you can. But I would say that for a, for a ten day safari, you can you can you can do that. You know, between say four thousand on the low end, and you can go up to ten twelve thousand on the high end. So again, it all depends on your budget. But a lot of great value for your dollar. Great, great. And then I'm going to ask you another question that's very hard to answer, but what is the best time to go? That's an excellent question because it's a bit of a Rubik's cube. If you have your focus just on the game viewing, okay, that's your main focus, I should say, then the best time to go is our summer, their winter, which is like July and August. And the reason why is because the grasses are low. And uh, it's much easier to spot the game. So the game viewing is off the charts when it's, you know, when it's their winter. And the watering holes where, they, where they, the water access is, 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 um, is not very accessible. So, you know, you, you find them around the watering holes and the guides are able to take you to the animal viewing a lot, a lot better. But with that being said, during those months, it's cold, so it's not swimming time. So it's not great to go swimming in Cape Town. You can certainly do the activities, but if you wanted to do a little bit of beach and bush, then you would go to one of the islands. There's so, a question here about the Great Migration. When does that happen? The Great Migration, which by the way, is in East Africa, um, you know, Tanzania and Kenya, it happens from around June to October. So that is about the best time to go, and it's cyclical. So depending on which month, it may be better for you to be stationed in Kenya or to be stationed in Tanzania. It's all about crossing that Mara River, following the um, following the grass and following the water. But that's pretty much the time frame between June and October. Excellent. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in. Robin, thank you again so much for your time. Um, and, and oh, wait, there's another question. Gorilla viewing, can you talk about that? Certainly can. That is the most, that is a bucket list experience for sure. Gorilla viewing or gorilla trekking is uh, available in both Uganda and in Rwanda, okay? And it's truly, you know, an amazing experience. Um, you do have to get a permit to go and it's a little more expensive in Rwanda. It's actually $1,500 a person and in Uganda it's half the price. But um, it's, it's truly, you know, if you're going to be in Africa and if you're going to be in East Africa, it's right next door to Kenya and Tanzania. So you should definitely go and do gorilla trekking. There's all sorts of protocols, even more so now with COVID because, you know, their the genetics are so similar to ours. So you'll have to do the PCR tests and all that. But um, definitely, definitely worth going. And then the, it is seasonal. You, you, you are going in the woods. You are not the woods. You're going in the forests. And so when it's the rainy season, it's not the best time to go because it's quite muddy. And it's not, it's not you know, you have to be fairly fit to do it. You don't have to be exceptionally fit because they can put you in different groups depending on your fitness level. But again, ask us, you know, when you want, which time you're looking, you know, to go so we can make sure you're not going during the rainy, muddy season. Excellent. Good information. And um, anybody interested in learning more about any of these destinations, uh, any of these safaris, or, or if you're ready to start planning, feel free to reach out and I'll put you in touch with one of our travel advisors who really specializes in this in this type of travel. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys. We look thanks, forward Robin. to seeing you in Africa. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody. Enjoy your afternoon.
Bye for now.